No, yeah, this is going to be a Blu-ray and DVD update. Uh, I haven't done one of these in a very long time. Um, it's going to be one of, I think, three or four. Um, I've got some DVDs to show first. Mostly documentaries. Uh, to all I'd recommend. I won't tell you too much about the documentaries. I'll just give you the uh, just the base information. I don't want to spoil anything. Um, first up is Caption of Friedman's. It's a um, Jewish family in Long Island. Uh, father's a successful teacher. And him and a son... One of his sons, three of them, he's got three sons, gets accused of abusing um, children within his care. Um, he has a, um, like almost like a computer workshop in his house. And it's a really fascinating documentary. Uh, the family are a very, um, let's say, unique family. Uh, they have strange ways about them, but was the, was the dad a paedophile? I suppose on some levels, but in the way he was sentenced and along with the son it's very very uh, there's a lot of questions a lot of questions to be asked uh, it was a very very good documentary um second one up is 75 75 precinct in new york goes um about a corrupt cop uh michael dowd i mean this guy man even when he's shedding tears you don't believe a, a word he says him and his crew we're basically just ripping off drug dealers, working with drug dealers, making a, a, a fine profit until he, as, as most kind of situations like this, eventually comes in a downfall with our infernal affairs, internal affairs and um, investigating them. Really good, really good documentary. I'd really recommend that. Uh, this was fantastic. I really enjoy this. is Cartel Land um, from two sides of the border, both confronting them, the drug issue. Uh, You've got the Arizona Rangers, a militia group um, patrolling the border of Arizona, which was kind of... I know it's been changed a little bit since then with the fences, but back then, it's an absolute joke. And I think it's uh, more of a joke, and it's still a joke now, with um, illegals coming through. And you've got a Mexican village. The headman um, formed a um, vigilante group going after the cartels, but slowly the group gets eroded. As You see a lot of the group basically take over cartel... Um, groups and um, just start their own drug operations. Really good, really good documentary. I recommend anything. The ending is just, you know, it kind of hits you, in, 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 but it's not to be expected, and not to be unexpected really, because Mexico, I mean, you first start with Mexican people because their governments are just so fucking corrupt You're in the cartel pocket. You know, most, I don't think many Mexicans would kind of really quibble at that. You know, it's you, you feel sorry for them, you do. Yeah, next up is a fascinating documentary, um, Paradise Lost Trilogy. I'm sure a lot of people have seen this, about the Robin Hood Hill murders. I won't go into too much about it, but definitely I recommend it to anybody. Uh, three lads, three teens, sorry, get accused of murdering um, three children brutal, in a real brutal fashion. Um, and HBO follow the youngsters, follow them as they're being accused, follow them as they go to court and I won't talk about the subsequent programs because I would spoil the first one but uh, it's uh, it's just it's documentary filmmaking it's finest it's absolutely amazing it's uh, get you angry get you sad get you pretty emotional as well some of the scenes in court when you see the uh, the file with the actual forensic photos of the, the dead youths I've got to be honest man that, that kind of that really got me emotional seeing that you know there's something about you know seeing Seeing youngsters being killed in such a just in a well, I've seen youngsters being killed anyway, but in, in that fashion, it's just just beyond comprehension. But it's, it's brilliant. D definitely watch that. It's a, it's a brilliant document. All, all three of them, they're fantastic. And I also picked up the James Stewart Westing collection. I like James Stewart, man. He's just a just can't get tired of his films. We've got um, the Rare Breed, Shenandoah Night Pass. Shenandoah's amazing. Uh, Night Passage. Far Country, Bend of the River, which is a great film. Winchester 73 is another great one. And Destry Rides again. I got these really, really cheap. Um, just before Christmas. Fantastic. Right. Uh, Blu-rays. These are fairly kind of... No, no, there's a few non-kind of catalogue titles. Um, picked up Home Alone, just a classic Christmas film. I can just... Don't get tired of watching that the family. It's just amazing. Picked these two up because Michael Douglas is... Uh, <laughs> The sort of the mid nineties, early well no, actually no, Fatal Attraction I think was was it eighty nine or ninety? But he had the real kind of perverted years, Michael Douglas, and uh, <laughs> I don't get tired of it, man. It makes me laugh. Um, 
got Disclosure and Fatal Attraction. Fatal Attraction is always a sham, man. I always, I always thought it. Oh no, no, that's the. Does it end? No, no, no. The ending is good. It just it could, it kind of falls down a bit in the middle. I think it could be more crazy. I think Fair Play do um, going close. She does a good job, and Douglas is funny with it. And I haven't watched Disclosure in a long time, but I, enjoy, I just enjoyed <laughs> the sort of the midlife crisis era <laughs> of Douglas's career. Just uh, I, I love Michael Douglas, man. I really do. He, he, he never fails to make me laugh. With some of his uh, roles, and I like that. That's an insight because I love. He can be real badass as well, like in Black Rain and Star Chamber. Right, this is one of my favourite uh, favourite films. It's so funny. Um, uh, Danish Jungle Clown. I got the TV series. Well, I love the TV series. It's not for the faint-hearted. What kind of annoys me about this release as well? Something censored near the end. Uh, which is I won't, I won't spoil what that is, but it it, it takes a lot out of it, man. It's it's better with the blur. It kind of affects it. There's no I don't know why the company did it. It's, it's kind of annoying to be honest. But this is just if you get a bit prudish and and you get easily offended, don't watch this. I'll just warn you in advance. But if you've got if your sense of humour goes to every level and you just just watch it it's, it's brilliant I was barely laughing at that it's such such a guy it's, I've, I've watched it before but I, I needed to buy because the TV series reminded me of it absolute classic uh, film here Alistair Sim Terry Thomas and Ian Carmichael School for Scoundrels oh, I just, just 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 a fantastic film I love Terry Thomas man so much I just you know just so sad the way you know his his death and the way it happened it just uh you know just seeing the light out of his eyes man it was so sad just but this is just this is just a fantastic film i love that film uh a film i haven't seen i picked it up i'll be watching this probably the next few days uh best years of our lives another just amazing james Stewart performance i think one of my I, Nah, yeah, because he was was he nominated for this performance? I'm not sure. In in Harvey, oh, it's such a such a great film. James, he's just such a such a lovable person. I just can't, you know, just easy when people say, "Well, who are your favourite actors?" And you say, "Well, that's a bit of a hard question." But who are your most loved actors? Actors you love? You put James Stewart. You know, I just love the guy. Just you, you, you don't get people, you don't get him like that anymore. And it's a cliche, but you really don't. And here's another. Um, This is such a just such a great film. Um, you can't take it with you. Uh, <laughs> it's it's just a such a just a heartwarming, just funny film. Just uh, see now, who's the guy who plays the, the? Is it is it Lionel Barrymore? No, I'm not sure. The guy who plays the real. Nasty piece of work, and it's a wonderful life. But he plays an apps just polar opposite in this. Um, and he's so good, and Jam Stewart's so good. It's just, just a wonderful film. You just you, you wouldn't get a film made like that now. There's too much pessimism in the world, but you know, just sometimes you, it's nice to kind of go back on those films. Um, I picked up two westerns, uh, two I haven't seen. I hear good stuff about uh, Kirk D Douglas in a uh, Man Without a Star. It's great cover like that. I picked these two up from Germany and Gunman's Walk and Van Heflin. Love Van Heflin. Love him in Shane. Uh, Three Attentive Humour as well. The original one, not the terrible remake. I hear good stuff about that. I do. Right. Two absolute classic films. Love this film. One of my favourite Sean Penn performances. Favourite Walk. One of my favourite Walker performances among many at close range. Uh, um, Lucy Bass on is it? I think at the Johnson crime family out of Pennsylvania. Uh, Sean Penn's in this as well. Love Walken's gang man. I mean he's got a he's got a real motley assort. And you've got R.D. Cole, um, had one of the best beards of the period. You know, State of Grace and Waterworld and uh, uh, Colours. You got David Strathen, and you got oh, I can't remember what's Bob Call from the first Batman. Oh God, what's his name? Someone else as well. But yeah, just just walking, so good. The the coyote story in this. Oh, it's just so he's just really nasty, mean bastard. 
great film. You know, a film that we talked about, you know, it's often forgotten. And this is another absolute classic, one of my favourite Lee Marvin performances. And Bernice Borgnine's amazing, just great cover art as well. I can't switch in for the North. Oh, God, I love this film. I need to rewatch it. It's such a great, great film. I love his his last lines in uh, this film, Lee Marvin, uh, to Carradine. It's, it's great. It's, it's again, you know, Lee Marvin. You know, I was watching um, Carl's video the other day, uh, Deuce Libs. I was watching how men are not in cinema anymore, and I just, I just kept just. I was watching, and I was just banging the table. I was like, Cole, you know, you're so spot on. You never get Marvin anymore. Never. It just. In fact, there's, you know, each, there's so many manly films in this update actually coming through, but you just don't get them anymore, man. You know, you get the odd. They're being phased out, which is I won't get into why they're being phased out, but you know, they don't really like men being men in cinema anymore, which is a bit of a shame. But what can you do? Lee Marvin as well and the Sparks Gang. I haven't seen this film. Lee Marvin's really good in it. So about a Kino. I'm buying so many Kino titles lately. Christ. They're releasing some very very good stuff. Navajo Joe Burt Reynolds. Like this film. Not not good. Not the best, but you know it's still solid. And again, Burt. You know Burt. One of some, such some great manly films as well. You know. You know Burt really. Before like the muscle kind of band stars and. And that's not an insult to Arnie and Stallone, but you know, because I love them as well. But he, he, some of his his action movies, you know, she's really underrated. You know, Sticks a great one. Oh God, I've totally forgot the one of Henry Silverman with the amazing, amazing stunt at the end, Sharky's Machine. But you know, you know, there's others as well. You know, just great actor, but really, really love his early roles. And this, this is just an all-out classic. If, if you haven't seen this film. <laughs> Just definitely watch it. I cannot recommend this film enough. If you don't like it, but you know, that's your own problem. But I'm telling you, you will like it. Uh, Siege of Firebase Gloria. Wings, Hauser, and Ali Ermey. Uh, set in Vietnam. Oh man, this is such a good film. Wings, Hauser is so good in this. Uh, you got a small patrol. Uh, and the right slap bang in the middle of the Tet Offensive. 68 when the um, Viet Cong. Around 50,000 strong, infiltrated various facilities, and, and during peacetime, hit uh, the United States um, and uh, the South Vietnamese. It's, oh, this is just an unbelievably good film. So the the body count's ridiculous. Great lines, real manliness on display. It's it's just a great cover art as well. Absolute classic. Loved every minute of watching it. Don't make films like that anymore. Another, oh, just <laughs> another man's man here. But you know, let's just, oh, you know, let's just get into it. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Norris in Delta Force Two. Billy Drago is the villain. And his villain Ramon Cota. John P. Ryan as well. John P. Ryan was hurt on this film. He was hurt in a helicopter accident. He never really recovered from it. Another great actor, great villain. Richard Jekyll as well. You know, love Jekyll. Great film. Better than the first film in my opinion. Just Billy Drago. Just just born to play a piece of shit just born just 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 goes with it you don't the villains as well man villains are dying in cinema you know and i think you know what i'm saying you know just when i call he didn't mention that but he should do almost like villains dying you know don't see my like jim brown and slaughter not bad mainly recommended for rip torn's just brilliant performance just over the top just the amount of <laughs> The amount of just remarks he was coming out of the Jim Brown in this. It was good, but it just it just wasn't quite right. It didn't it just lack something. I hear the second slot was better. Now this is a great film. I love this. And I think Fred Williamson, I think I don't think we'll argue that Fred Williamson is a better actor than Jim Brown. Um but he's really good, Black Caesar. Just fantastic film. I absolutely love this film. Um Top Who Art Lund. Oh man, he's so good. So I mean some of his lines in this Art Lund are just, just so great. They just, and you know, it's 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 a great film. It's, you know, a lot. You definitely see some influence on Scarface, in my opinion. Definitely with the, you know, the minority status. You know, you know, rising through the ranks and um, getting to a certain position. Eventually, you know, topples. But it's just a great film. The soundtrack's amazing as well. Um, who directed this? Larry Cohen directed this. And you can tell Larry, you know, never asking permission while he... <laughs> there'll be no permission from New York um, City. To, you know, he just filmed, you know, the, the way he saw things. Probably got into a lot of trouble for it. Um, now, this film, another man's man. Charles Bronson. Kinjetti, um, Kinjetti. 
Is it Kinjit or Kinjit? I can't remember forbidden subjects. Kinjit. Um, this is a real nasty Bronson one. Again, you know, near the end, I mean, look, Bronson had kind of gone from badass Bronson, transitioned to kind of fuzzy, kind of hmm, fairly, fairly melancholy, you know, well, no, just kind of old man Bronson, but this is he's still got a bit of bite in this one. Um, trying to stop a pimp who. Oh, um, from finding various kind of um, young girls, and when I mean young girls, I mean young. Who plays him in this? I can't think of the Juan Fernandez. He's in Bulletproof, but I know he's in Small Round Jurassic. No, no, is he the beginning of Jurassic Park? The first one? No, no, it's Arachnophobia, and he plays the the villain and collect it. But there's something else he's in where he plays a. Is it Sa Salvador? That's it, Salvador, and he's really good in this. So great when when. Bronson makes him eat the watch. Bronson is such a so funny in this. Some of some of the lines he comes out with. Great, great ending as well. But yeah, it's 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 a good one. I like this. Is this is this? Yeah, J. Lee Thompson. Bronson did so many films. J. Lee Thompson recommended that. I don't DVD, but it's a real good one. Now this, I had to buy this. I had to get the media book for this because it just needed to be bought. And when when you see the cover, and then you know the film. It's just, and and this is fully uncut as well because all previous editions had been cut on Blu-ray. Death Wish 2, that cover art is so amazing. God, I love this film. There's nothing, you know, I think Bronson was wasted. When was the first Death Wish? 75. This one was 82, I think. 82 or 81, I think it's 82. This is limited to 888. Should have done another, this, was, this should have been another Death Wish. Bronson could have easily done a, at least one, maybe two, between those years, but... Oh man, I mean, nasty rape at the beginning. I think this is the nastiest Death Wish. I think I'll be pretty fair. Now the third one's the most fun. The third one's almost the most insane. But this is this is nasty. Bronson, so many good lines. Just gunning down scumbags coming out the woodwork. That one where he's got, he's, uh, you know, do you, do you believe in God? And the guy says, yeah. He says, oh, you know, very soon you'll meet him. You know, words to that effect. But just it's so good. Like, Lance Fishburne as well plays an absolute piece of shit. Later to develop that in. Um, King of New York as well but just just a great film again Bronson you'll never get Bronson again no way you know just real manly film um, now this film I got this media book and I can't it's probably the most disappointing Argento film and, and it began well and it's it's opera and wonderful cover art and I can't begin to tell you how really dis I was so disappointed in this film I was expecting I mean I'm a big Argento fan I'd, I'd never watched this film um very you know I realised Code Red were going to release it and I'll, I'll be damned if I'm, I'm parting my money with that company again I just don't like the guy and I think his business model stinks and he's got some attitude on him really has and you know some, some balls the way he talks to you know would be buyers you know he really, you know, he gets on my nerves. Um, I'd no way would I put any money in his pocket again, unless maybe Rituals comes out, maybe. Um, but yeah, the film was it started well, and just just ran to ground. Even probably probably about forty minutes in. No, in fact, I enjoy I enjoyed the one scene I really enjoyed was in the apartment with the uh, the policeman outside the door, thinking it was the killer and stuff. And then you know that was a good moment. But then after that, it just died. Didn't have a good ending as most kind of Argento films, you know, do, and it was just disappointing. This is oh, I got another, oh, I got another media book. I don't know if I got this. Um, sometimes they come back. Stephen King. Now, I can't remember what book this has the short this this short story is in. I'm sure is it is it in that is it in Night Shift, or is it Skeleton Crew? Or maybe maybe it was a standalone novel. I don't actually remember. Maybe it was a standalone novel. I, I'm not. I'm not too sure. I can't remember if it was a short story or not. But this is an absolute great film. I think the guys playing the uh, the undead killers are just so good. All of them. They're, they're fantastic. It's, it's a really, really, really good film. Always enjoyed this one. Real good. At, um, is this ninety one? I think one of the best horrors of the nineties. Again, you know, horror had kind of like suffered during that period. But that is a, that is a good one. Another just I'm, I think I might try to, I've seen people on I think blu-ray.com switch this to a red case and I think I might do it it's uh, a special edition of Black Christmas I haven't watched this film in so long when I watched this film funny enough on Christmas when I was around many years ago now and I was about 12 really 
scared me. I remember watching it late. It was late on Channel 4, really late. It was about 1, 2 in the morning. And it's such an underrated film. Uh, you know, Bob Clark, such a good director. Just an absolute tragedy what happened to him. Lost him way too, way too young. He's a great director. Love Death Dream as well. Absolutely love that film. And others as well. I'm, I'm probably, you know, I'm probably forgetting just off the top of my head. I, I can't really think of any right at the moment. But um, but Black Christmas, such a such a good film. So influential as well. Uh, now this is due to your fault. You had to get this. It's been, I've been waiting for it to kind of just drop slightly in price. But it's the Grand Astro release of Beyond. And it's just oh god, love this film. The dude just sometimes I I, I dip between. Fortune Argento, you know, and you know, really, you know, they're both great. I shouldn't have to kind of choose between them. But this is just, just so many. I just, just ridiculous amount of extras. Oh man, the scene when, great scene in the morgue in this. Well, I won't say, it, but just, just spectacularly brilliant violence. This film just, it's such a, such a great film. You know, I saw it on DVD, you know, years ago, and you know, I really don't think I appreciated it. Don't know, well, maybe I'd, I was watching it later, I was tired or something, but, you know, watching it fully fresh, you just appreciate what a fucking great movie this is. It's a great movie, and Grindhouse have done it all the justice in the world, you know. Proper company, you take their time and release a film right, you know. Right, it's the last of the update. I'm, and, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll argue these films to death now, and particularly with this extended edition, it makes the film a lot better. It's the Hobbit Battle of the Five Armies. Look, it's got its problems, no doubt. And one of the problems is, well, there she is there. That's kind of a problem. And too much Legolas, that's another problem. But, you know, the extended edition, the battle signals, the chariot scene alone, just... It's what... Seeing that, if, I, if, if that was in the theatrical edition, watching that in the cinema would have been just a brilliant moment to watch. It's a brilliant sequence. Loved more of the ogres at the beginning when they attacked the dwarven chariots. More of Billy. Thought he did a great job as Dane. Um, more of um, them charging out of Erebor. I just wish that... You know, the ones... And then the extras on this are fantastic as well. I was watching some of these and I got real emotional. I've got to be honest, you know. Just simple things really. The acting of... Um, uh, is it Stephen... I can't think of the actor who plays Bond. Is it Stephen Hunter or something? I can't think of his name, but... They show how much emotion he brought into the scene when he's blowing the horn before the uh, Sons of Durin charge out of Erebor. Just the acting, the way he brings himself to tears, you know, and you can see Jackson. And, you know, it, what annoys me the most, I think, with these films is that they're so quick to have got on the Hobbit, so quick, the critics, so quick to grab it by the neck, wanting to hate it from the start, telling me telling Tolkien fans, telling Tolkien fans who have read these books over and over again, know more about it than I do, telling us, the fans, what we should think, what Tolkien would feel. Don't speak for Tolkien. Not even Christopher speaks for him. Okay, so don't you be doing it either. But then at the same time, giving passes to such piles of shit, absolute shit with no emotional attachment to them. A certain film I was dragged to before Christmas to see at the cinema, you know, I, I don't have to name the film. Let's just say it's probably the biggest blockbuster of the year. And time stopped watching it. I couldn't bear it. Just lack of emotional attachment. Lack of character development. Oh, but that got five stars. Oh, but this. Oh, no, this is the worst thing in the world. Oh, no, no, we can't have that. You know, heaven forfend. You know, and it, it drives me crazy. I'm not going to have people tell it, especially some little little blogger who knows bugger all about Tolkien and tell me, who, if some of them don't even know what the Arkenstone is, don't be telling me about Tolkien and his works, don't you dare, the temerity of these people just drives you, just drives you mad and they're not going about how poor Azog looks, Azog looks fucking incredible in this film, he looks amazing when he's fighting uh, Thorin, I cannot understand it at all, and look I mean the, the one big killer of this film is there's not enough Bayon in it that's, that's bad, that's uh, particularly when you see the scene they rendered when he when he, when he was going to fight a troll you know, Bayon should have turned up at the battle none of her none of, none of Toriel, too much Legolas, Bayon turns up at the end and just rips shit up, I'm, I'm just so surprised that Jackson being a fan of like the big monster in a film, went that way really surprised me and it was it was a waste I have to be honest with you but you know the extended edition gives it so much more time to breathe some great scenes uh, and you know I thoroughly enjoyed it and you know and I'll tell you what Richard Armitage I remember when it when it was first cast I was like who, who is this guy 
you know, he was just in Robin Hood on BBC One. You who the hell? He proved me wrong time and time again. He's absolutely incredible in these films. Does a brilliant job, as do all the dwarves. Apart from maybe one, well, but, and I won't pick on him. I won't even mention. Well, I will actually. Ari, uh, I, I think he was a bit of a bit of a waste, to be honest. Didn't really like the way he was portrayed. But all the others, and and Killian Philly didn't like their their endings. They should have died defending their uncle, as in the book. But there we go. Still a great film, extended edition. And I thought Luke Evans did a great job as Bard. And you know, it, it was. And, and you know, let's not forget Martin Freeman and you know, Jimmy McCann. But great film extended edition gives it more time to breathe and I think if people hadn't gotten the first films back so much the first film I enjoy as much as The Fellowship I think the first film is a brilliant film hadn't gotten its back so much all these pacing issues wouldn't have been a problem and Jackson wouldn't have threw out a near two hour film when it should really have been three hours at the cinema but that's what you get critics you know you know you, you you know these little like blogs and critics. You know you, you get on the back and you know get on the back of a guy who's had the balls to put it to screen. You know you carry on writing your little blogs and that when you won't achieve anything like Jackson has. That's my rant over, but it's the truth, and that's the way I feel. They annoy the hell out of me. Some of these people. There's a real air of pessimism all the time for these people, and they love getting on the backs of films like that, and it annoys me. So look. <laughs> yeah, sorry for getting angry, but I, I, it does it, it stirs up passion within me. So that's the end of the update, and I'll be back with um, a second one soon. And uh, you know, I'm sorry for not replying to comments, so I've just been real busy. So yeah, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and I'll see you soon.